This is called getting better. And you can see the, from left to right the, the, the pictures and the, the bubbles and the images get brighter. And I liken that to, to recovery. You know, nothing happens overnight. It, it's hard work. Uh, getting better is a process, but uh, it's something that's uh, worth fighting for and can be done. I was actually at work and my partner was online and she saw a link to Peace Love. I mean, she texted me the link and said, you have to check this out. And so I got on the website and looked and I was thinking, wow, this is really cool, but I'm sure it's in California because that's where these things are. They don't exist in New England, they're all in California. Um, and so just for the hell of it, I, I went on the Contact Us page just to see, you know, which part of California it was in. And it was in Rhode Island and I literally almost fell out of my seat. I couldn't believe it. Peace Love Studios was born to try to do something that no one has ever done before. We've taken dead aim at what I consider to be the last major social injustice left in our society, and that's the stigma associated with mental illness. Um, on some of these national boards, they parallel it to the civil rights of the 1960s. And uh, it's come time for that issue to be addressed. We think we can do it, and the way that we're going to do it is we're going to use art and we're going to use that to build a symbol of hope and acceptance. What we're doing is, is much bigger than any, any one person. It's not about anybody, it's about everybody. I played sports at Ohio State on tennis scholarship and shortly thereafter I was diagnosed with uh, obsessive compulsive disorder. The obsessions of OCD, the O, are things that happen to you. Their thoughts or images or experiences that pop into your head that don't make any sense and that you'd like to get rid of. Whether it's something like this, this is one of my, my paintings called Stop the Madness. Compulsions are the classic things like hand washing or checking or counting, but sometimes you can do mental rituals that nobody else can see. In its most severe form, it can take virtually all your waking life. You know, you're in the airport and uh, you know, you've got your three-year-old and um, you turn around for a minute and you're in a crowded place and uh, there's no kid. Someone that has what I have, they could have that same exact level of anxiety uh, over something completely ridiculous. And you know it's completely ridiculous, but uh, you, can't, you can't stop. So 15 years ago, uh, on the way home from work one day, I decided I gotta do something to relax. I picked some paints up and tried painting. I said, I got this crazy idea, I know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna build a life brand and a symbol of acceptance and hope for people with mental illness. This interactive symbol that's a safe zone that people can all connect with in their own way. Peace Love's mission is to build a positive mainstream symbol on behalf of mental illness, and that symbol stands for creating hope, awareness, and acceptance for the tens of millions of individuals and their families that suffer from mental illness. I met the guys at the uh, Newport Folk Festival. It was a nice day, but it started raining and I was dashing for some cover. And I looked over and I saw the, the logo, and the logo intrigued me. It was uh, fascinating how in all these years nobody put a heart and a peace sign together. And then I stepped back looking at his artwork and I looked down underneath the logo it said that I suffer from OCD. And at that point, a very distressed looking mother came in with a 10 or 11 year old child and was asking Jeff for help. This is what my son, I think, is suffering from. And that again, that intrigued me as much as the logo. When I think of peace of mind, it's, it's, it's the small moments. It's, it's what you see here. You want the, the, the games with your children, the, the reading a book with your daughter. So taking the Peace Love logo and interpreting it in themes is my forte. I'm wearing the, a shirt that was designed by a, a local artist. Some major internationally known artists creating interpretations of the logo. So if you see that symbol, you know, well, that person knows a little bit about the troubles that people with mental illness go through. I'm really happy. This is great. I think this is great. This is great. This is great. It's our vision that every time someone wears that symbol, shares that symbol, or experiences that symbol, we, 
as a company and as a society are one step closer to breaking down the stigmas associated with mental illness. Erasing the stigma, educating the public is our goal and obviously what Peace Life Studios is doing is on that same, uh, very same parallel to help people understand this issue, talk about it in the public in a way that will have this community conversation so that people understand. We actually take our customers and we're turning our customers into benefactors and that guarantees us and assures us that we'll have sustainability and the more that we can grow, the more classes we can teach, the more people's lives we can affect. There's a defining feature that is represented in my work and you'll, you'll see um, there's no face. That's the, the face of, of mental illness. It could be anybody. And uh, I'd like to introduce Amy Kearney, this beautiful display that you're going to see when you walk through here that we're featuring right now. This is the artist Amy. I suffer with long-term and chronic depression and an anxiety disorder. I've dealt with anorexia and borderline personality disorder. Every I uh, actually was in the hospital. I've been hospitalized for depression and uh, I was looking for a way to express myself that involved not starving myself or cutting myself. And I just started drawing and they just came out. Um, and it was my first real way of expressing myself in a way that people understood and that didn't involve hurting myself. And she, and she's done a lot of these seminars. Yep. And uh, we went to Salem to see her do one of those up there. I actually learned a lot. It's almost like having a journal that's on display in color. And it's exciting and embarrassing, thrilling and scary and relaxing and reassuring and validating all at the same time. It's sort of this like, one of the things that's really important about what I do and what I really believe in is it's not just reaching people who are struggling, but it's also reaching the people who are trying to understand the people who are struggling. That's sort of the greatest part, the greatest joy that I find in artwork, in my artwork and in other people's artwork, is, is starting conversations between people. I mean, I can relate to, like, everything yeah. in, in a little bit of a way. We were at the hospital, his hospital, and I noticed the hospital didn't have a lot of art. So I said, let's start hanging your artwork in the hospital. One of the defining moments for me, and I remember, here we are at the front of the hospital, uh, my compulsions were so bad, checking my door. Um, believe it or not, I actually had to exit out of the sunroof because I couldn't open the door. And then Jeff thought of teaching the kids and people at the hospital. Then, the, you know, as you know, the whole thing has kind of exploded. One, two, three, paint for peace, go! The beauty of our Paint for Peace class really lies in its simplicity and the fact that we can take that class anywhere. You know, here we're at the downtown Boys and Girls Club in Providence today, and here are kids that don't perhaps have the opportunity to be exposed to, uh, to the arts. Kiara. Kiara, what a nice name. Come on in. We have a great program with Gateway Health Services. Gateway is the largest community health care provider right in our backyard and we're fortunate enough to work with their psychosocial rehab services where we have a group of adults with severe mental illness that come to our studio each and every week. It gives these individuals an opportunity to interface with the community, giving them a sense of self-confidence and inclusion. Norma came up to me, I don't forget anything. She showed me her artwork, which is beautiful by the way, and she said, and she said to me, she said, why do you paint? She says, because it makes me feel good, right? So we got, what's that? It helps with my illnesses. Well, so, that sound familiar? Use your imagination and start moving some paint around, okay? What? You messed up, we got a mess up. A mistake, nice work. Our children often don't have good verbal skills and so they're not able to um, always talk about their feelings and what they're experiencing. And what I see when they paint is they just open up. You almost kind of see lights go on inside of them. And what I see through the painting is a means for the kids to increase their ability to focus by using their hands, by using their whole bodies to paint. They're paying attention to the colors, to the brightness, to the sounds that are going on around them. In a lockdown unit in, at the hospital, a uh, young man, maybe 14, 15, he's coming into the unit and I put my hand out to shake it and walk him in and he goes flying by me and uh, the therapist uh, actually apologized to me. You know, and Jeff, sorry. And he said, you know, the young boy, you know, hears voices. We start teaching the class and sure enough, he comes flying in and he's sitting opposite of me on the other side of the table. I said to him, uh, oh, you must be from the Art Academy. 
you know, making me look bad here again. He says, no, 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 I'm not from the art academy. I said, come on. I know you're from the academy, come clean. He says, no, 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 no. I said, come on. And he looks me straight in the eyes, puts his hand, he says, no, no, he says, I'm not from the art academy. He says, I'm mentally ill. And I looked him right back, I said, me too. Well, you know, you, you know, everybody in the room is, you know, is quite a moment. And then uh, he, he did a painting. And as if that wasn't enough, he brought it up to my wife and I after. And uh, he wanted the, uh, he wanted to have it hang in our, uh, our studio. Now what I find when I move paint around, it makes me feel good. You look like you, do you feel good right now? You look like if it, what? Yeah. Yeah, you loosen it up a little bit? Guess what this heart is in? Guess what this heart is in? What? Somebody. You know, even some of my closest friends, I, I don't know if they believe that I have something sometimes, but you know, I'll have a tax myself and you know, hide it. Half one place, half the other, you know, attack. Torture, repeats, hear you, relax, enjoy, clear. But when I paint, sometimes they dissipate and you know they can subside and go away. And, and, and something my, my doctors have said if they put electrodes on my brain, when I'm actually, and I'm, I'm sure this is true of many artists, something happens. Uh, but you get lost. Oh, that's like the peace love body. Did you do that on purpose? I don't do it on purpose. You know why? Because I get no idea what I'm doing. How about that, huh? What? You too, huh? All right, you're my kind of artist. He says he can't paint, but you know, if you can't paint, why do you have a studio? <laughs> I heard about Peace Love Studios through a support group that I'm involved with that's for parents of children with OCD. Kevin, without medicine, gets horrible thoughts in his head that he cannot get rid of that are violent and very scary to him. For Katie, if she went in one door, she had to go out the same door, up one stairway, down the same stairway, a lot of touching and tapping. Those are mine. Painted them at peace, love. And if she didn't do that, she feared that something horrible would happen. They're really fun. I get to be with other kids who have pretty much the same problems as me. I like it because when you do something weird, they don't question it, they understand. And you don't have to talk about it or explain it to them. It's not just one of those obnoxious places where only really, really good people can have their stuff up. Anyone can. And it makes me feel good because I'm all. Look at this. Matt, check it out. We got a Picasso, our first Pablo. Oh, they're very proud of the artwork they've done at Peace Love Studio. They've got it hanging all over the house, and they tell people at school and their friends that they've got their artwork up in a gallery. And then when we got the call that they were going to put their artwork on note cards to sell, um, that was huge. We bought a whole bunch <laughs> and have, you know, sent many cards out saying, this is my artwork, this is my artwork. And I'm going to have you tell me what your paintings are after. You just don't know how, how your children are going to grow up to cope with this and how will they live their adult lives. And here we can see Jeff, who's talking about it, who's a professional. He has a family, and he started this organization. So it's huge, and I think he's a great role model for the kids. You want to tell us? Oh, okay. so I'm going to have to learn sp Spanish. OK. Can you tell us in Spanish? Go ahead. Primero yo le puse rojo y encima de rojo le puse el azul. Y cuando le puse el azul hice el corazón con el amarillo y le puse naranja por encima. Después hice esa línea y lo pinté de verde. Look at that, huh? How's that? Check this out. This is our group painting. You guys can hang this up somewhere nice here at the Boys and Girls Club and show everybody the work that you did together. Let's give everybody a hand. I hope everybody... Yeah? I want you guys to all keep painting, okay? You're all artists. I'd love for us as a family to stay involved. I think it's a great organization and I would do anything to support it. For me, peace love is both finding my own inner peace and finding peace for myself in the world and learning to love myself in the world and then sharing that with other people to help other people find their own peace and learn to love themselves. There isn't a room that I walk into that somebody doesn't pull me over and say, Jeff, listen, I don't remember. Or, hey, it's, that's crazy. And then was cancer that way 25, 30 years ago? Maybe. But, I mean, come on, 2010 for God's sakes. You know, why the hell can't people talk about it? My whole dream is sort of coming true and giving me purpose of this is what you want to do and here's the universe telling you that this is what you're supposed to do.
Now it's like, you know, you get that. There he is. Peace of mind, heart equals peace, love. That's simple. That's how we make it, right there. Stay tuned. We're going to do some great things here. So. There you go.